The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. What if a person believes that Jesus' death and resurrection covers their sins, but does not source their belief in Jesus' promise that they would never perish, but have everlasting life? John 3.16, as a result of believing Him for this. A discussion about this just ahead with Bob Wilkin and Steve Elkins after I tell you about our website, faithalone.org, and invite you to go there for what we modestly believe is the best source for free grace theology information and resources. We have many, many articles for download in our bookstore. We have many books. There are some free e-books, lots of blogs and videos, many sources and formats, and you'll find more information about us, the Grace Evangelical Society. I will say more about it at the end, but the address for our website is faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Now it's time for our discussion of the day. Here is Bob Wilkin along with Steve Elkins. Steve, I think you have a question for us. Sure do, Bob. This is from Matt, and he says, My question is, if someone believes that they cannot lose their salvation, that is, never perish, there's not going to be condemnation, etc., is that not considered true belief if that belief is not based on a promise of Jesus like John 3.16? Like what if someone says they believe that they have eternal life because of Jesus and they can never lose it because they know Jesus died on the cross for their sins? Or what if they say they believe Jesus gives eternal life because they believe his death covered their sins and he rose again on the third day? Does the source of their believing in Jesus that they can never perish and have everlasting life, have to come from the promise where he says so? Yeah, that's a very good question. It's a little hard to follow, but here's my thought, Stephen. Tell me what you think. It seems to me if a person believes that Jesus died on the cross for his sins and that Jesus has forgiven him and that Jesus rose from the dead— but he does not believe the promise of everlasting life, then he does not know that he's secure forever. Sure. But what Matt's asking is something else. He's saying, what if someone says, I've never even heard of the promise of everlasting life, but I have heard that Jesus died for me and rose again. And from that, is he saying that that person has inferred, therefore I'm secure forever? I believe that's where he's going. Yeah, and I guess my answer would be, yes, under those circumstances, the person would be born again because they have believed the promise without even hearing the promise. They've just heard about his death and resurrection and somehow inferred from that that, therefore, I'm secure forever. But in many cases, you don't have to infer that because I've heard preachers say that, haven't you? Jesus died and rose again. Therefore, if you believe he died and rose again, then you're eternally secure. Yeah. Well, the issue there is they're being told they're eternally secure on the basis of Jesus' death and resurrection. But hypothetically, such a person might not believe in Jesus for everlasting life, but they might believe that the preacher says this, So because the preacher says this, I think there's a good chance I'm going to heaven when I die, something like that. It seems to me what we need is something from the lips of Jesus or the apostles that says that the one who believes in Jesus has everlasting life. Am I confusing here? I don't know. Maybe I'm... I think there are a couple confusing things. One is you said this hypothetical person might think there's a chance that I might get into heaven, that raises a serious factor because we believe you have to be certain of Christ's promise. You have to know it, be assured of it. You have to have confidence in it. You can't think, well, there's a chance that I can choose to trust what I'm not sure about here and maybe I'll get to heaven. That's not believing the gospel. That's actually disbelief according to Romans 4.20. Right. And so I know you're not saying that. Let's get back to some clear things, what we know. We know that there are many people who've been in church all their lives, and they know Jesus died for their sins, rose from the dead. If you ask them, so, John, do you believe that you have eternal life? Are you sure of it? 
They'd say, no, how can you know that? Right. So they're not understanding the significance of his death. Right. But as you say, certainly there are people who've heard that he died for their sins, and they do infer, or maybe through the preacher expounding, they do get the idea, even though they didn't hear specifically a verse quoting Jesus' promise, but they do infer that their sins are taken care of, they have eternal security, they have eternal life, however we want to say it, and they know it. And so in that case, I would think they've believed the truth of the gospel. I would, too. The The biggest problem with this is, well, let me give you an illustration. I remember I heard a, a friend of ours, he was telling this story about a cab driver. A pastor evangelized this cab driver, and the cab driver prayed some prayer that the evangelist told him to pray, the sinner's prayer. And so the person dropped off the evangelist. And then later that cab driver was talking to another cab driver and he said, I've been saved. And the guy said, really? And he said, I'd like to be saved too. How were you saved? He said, well, I prayed this special prayer and I was saved. And the guy says, well, can you tell me the prayer? Because I'd like to be saved too. And the guy says, I can't remember exactly what the prayer was. But the next time the evangelist is in my cab, I'll have him give me the prayer again and and I'll write it down so that you can get saved. That type of story is horrendous. It is horrendous. Because this person doesn't know they're secure forever. That What they're saying is something like, I prayed this magic prayer, and I think I'm probably or possibly going to go to heaven, and you should pray the magic prayer too. And some people are like that. The pastor says, if you believe Jesus died and rose again, then you're going to heaven. The person says, I don't know why that would be true, but okay. I think maybe I am going to heaven, so I'm going to latch on to that. According to the way Matt's telling the story, the person says, I'm absolutely convinced I am secure forever because of Jesus' death on the cross for my sins. Well, and maybe I should go back on what I said earlier. If the person is not believing it because Jesus said it or because Jesus' apostles said it, but they're believing it because the pastor said it, now the whole thing seems questionable to me. Because right. their faith isn't based on the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Let's go back to the cab driver. Let's suppose the guy who's sharing the, quote, gospel with him, actually, it's not the gospel. It's a bunch of work salvation right. stuff. Right. But this guy says a prayer, and he goes away, and he tells his cab driver friend, yeah, I know I have eternal life because I said this magic prayer. But he's not believed the gospel. To me, that's the horrendous part about it. He has, a, in a sense, false assurance here, just like many in the world's religions have, works religions. And let's talk for a minute about the word gospel. The word gospel, and I've written a book called The Ten Most Misunderstood Words, and the gospel is one of those chapters. In that, I talk about the fact that most of the time in the New Testament, the word gospel refers basically to good news. And often it refers to simply Christian ministry is called gospel. Paul calls his ministry gospel ministry. But in the book of Galatians, it seems to me the word gospel refers to Paul's justification by faith alone apart from Mm -hmm. works message. Mm -hmm. So that a false gospel in Galatians is the message of the Judaizers, this message of work salvation. So I think when you're using the term gospel, you're using it that way, the Galatians way, right? Yeah. So in that sense... A person could believe the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 11, that Christ died for my sins and rose again, which is actually there, a sanctification message for the believers in Corinth. Mm -hmm. But you could believe that and yet not believe the gospel of Galatians. In fact, the Judaizers were examples of that. Mm -hmm. They believed Jesus died and rose again, but they believed you had to be circumcised and follow the law of Moses to keep your justification, to keep your salvation. And as a result, that was a false gospel, Paul says. Yeah. So a person needs to believe in Jesus for everlasting life because the Bible says so. Sure. Not because pastor so-and-so said so, not because mom and dad says so, but because pastor so-and-so or mom and dad pointed me to Scripture. I'm believing based on the Word of God. I'm not believing based on some feeling I have or some intuition. If hypothetically a person was told you believe in Jesus, death and resurrection, you're secure forever, and they came to believe it, 
And somehow the person telling them this didn't show them any scripture that said that. They just said it, mm-hmm. and they somehow believed it. I don't know. I think you're in a twilight zone area there. It mm-hmm. never should happen. Everybody who says that should say, John 3.16, Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. They need to tie it to Scripture, yeah. because we don't yeah. want people believing based on what we say. We want people believing based on what God's Word says. Absolutely. Our faith needs to be in Jesus for what he promises, which is the gift of everlasting life. If a person is paraphrasing scripture and says that, Jesus said that the person who believes in me is never going to be eternally condemned, but is going to be with him forever. Mm -hmm. Some kind of living Mm -hmm. Bible paraphrase of John 3.16. That would be fine. Sure. But if I say it, if you believe in Jesus, you have everlasting life, you're never going to lose it. Well, that's true, but it'd be nice if I said, that's what Jesus said. Yeah. Like you said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of right, God. Right, right. And I think, too, we can hang our hats on the fact that we're saved by believing the truth of the gospel. Even if we're quoted a verse and we have the exact, you know, closest to the Greek translation of John 3.16 there could be, It's believing the truth of what's said there that saves us. That's a good point. Very good. So a person who believes that truth is born again, regardless of what leads them to believe it. Right. But it does need to be based on the Word of God. No question. And therefore, it is based on the promises in the Word of God to the believer. Amen. Well, thanks, Steve, and great question, Matt, and uh, thanks to you all uh, for listening, and remember, keep grace Grace in focus. focus. Zane Hodges' book, The Gospel Under Siege, a study about faith and works intention, is being offered this month to Grace in Focus listeners and available right now at half price through June the 30th when you use the discount code word SIEGE. S-I-E-G-E. Find this special offer at faithalone.org. Our goal at the Grace Evangelical Society is to teach Scripture clearly and without confusion. One of the best tools for that clarity, we believe, is our website. It's faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On our site, we have all kinds of materials that are designed to help you mature and grow in your faith and your understanding of Scripture. Please come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. You'll be glad you did. God loves a cheerful giver, and that's why we think our financial partners are some of the happiest people in the world. If you would like to learn how to become a financial partner with Grace in Focus, we would very much appreciate it. Learn more at faithalone.org. It's really exciting to hear from our listeners. So if you've got a question, comment, or feedback, I hope you'll reach out to us. Best way to do that is through email. Here is our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode of Grace in Focus, a question about John 17, 3. Does it teach that all believers know God? We thank you for being here today. We invite you to join us again for Grace in Focus. This is the Grace Evangelical Society. Until next time, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.